Awesome. Welcome everyone to the 21st of June, 2023 Aries Working Group call. We've got some cool stuff to talk about today. Pretty excited about it. This is a hyperledger call. And so the antitrust policy and the code of conduct are in effect here in the notes. There are links. Please reach out to uh, Stephen or I or any hyperledger leadership if you have issues and we will get them sorted so they can not get in the way of our work. Uh, the agenda is in the chat agenda link. Uh, you're welcome to make any changes useful to the community. Um, is there anyone new today that would like to introduce themselves? We are glad you're all here. Uh, announcements. It looks like there's a new announcement here for the Aries uh, Marketing Working Group. Yeah. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Helen Garneau. I uh, do marketing for Indicio. I also uh, chair the um, marketing committee for Hyperledger uh, with the membership here at Hyperledger. And I've been working with uh, Alex um, uh, Metcalf and some other folks in the community talking uh, a little bit about kind of the outcome of the last few uh, Aries calls, um, where it sounds like there is a need to update messaging, branding, descriptions, the whole the whole kit and caboodle when it comes to um, Aries brand. So uh, we are going to get together uh, in a kind of a, a working group. Maybe it's a task force. I don't know, whatever the appropriate uh, language is for, for this type of or a group, but uh, get together and start working through some of the um, updates um, uh, regarding branding. So if you uh, have an interest in um, contributing to the discussions, interest in um, adding, um, you know, change anything from, everything's on the table, anything from descriptions, logos, whatever you think would be helpful, um, please attend. If there's somebody else on your teams from your organization that um, is a marketer who might be interested in joining, we, you know, op open arms for anybody who wants to roll up their sleeves and um, help out with this, uh, these items. Um, so I put the information there for the group that we're going to meet next Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, and there's the Zoom link. Um, I am on Discord. So if you have any questions or thoughts or whatever ahead of time, please don't hesitate to tag me there um, in the Aries groups um, or direct message. Um, Alex, did you have any other thoughts or call outs at this time for uh, th that the announcement of the group? Not for the group, there's some activities going on behind the scenes, but I'll probably save that for the working group meeting. So yeah, please come if you're any interest in contributing at any level. It could be very high level as well. Like mm -hmm. how it's communicated up the chain, not just um, dev specific stuff. So all input is welcome on talking about and sharing the great work that is being done here. Also lurking is welcome if you're just interested in listening. Oh yeah, lurking. We love a lurker. Yeah, please do. We have a bunch of folks in the community that are speak up a lot, and we have a bunch that just listen. And every type of interaction that you desire is is perfectly appropriate. So, uh, thank you, uh, Helen and Alex, and anyone else involved for your work putting that together and your work on the marketing stuff. For sure, for sure. Oh, I saw John came off mute. John, did you have any thoughts on this? No, I just my no, my wife puts it on mute because I can't unmute myself. Oh, no worries. So I just sit, I lurk quietly with mute off. Hey, we love a lurker, as we said. Okay, thank you. Bye. Uh, awesome. Very cool. Uh, any projects want to highlight any uh, updates to their work? Um, I don't know if I already shared it here, but it isn't updated in the um, uh, in the notes, I see Stefan is, is doing the work. Uh, we have released Aries Framework JavaScript 040, I think two weeks ago with a lot of new features, uh, um, have now completely removed the need for dependency on in the SDK. Um, everything is pluggable, support ledger agnostic autocrats and uh, also uh, openly for PCI issuance. Um, so yeah, big release uh, made. Awesome. Excited to hear that and good work. Thank you for your efforts. Other updates? All right, we'll have some, some cool stuff along. So Sorry, I missed the mute button. Um, 082 in Aquapi is um, 
ready to go probably um, I'll do an RC one today and get that out. Um, so we did we did an RC zero um, had a couple of things we wanted to get in it. So there'll be another release of Akapai in the near future. Very cool. Thank you, Stephen. Awesome. Okay, here's topics for today. Um, Alex, we may not need to do the Aries marketing update unless you wanted to additionally given the presence of the call. Um, but uh, I wanted to at least call attention there. Is there anything you want to say in this meeting specifically about that, or would you? I'll give you. Just, I'll give you the. Call? I'll give you like a one minute update for sure, and then we can carry on the majority of that material through to the working group call. You've got a minute. Sweet. Uh, okay. Um, to say that just to update the people that things are moving forward um, really well. I spoke to several of you in the week. Um, your good self there, Sam and Helen and Sebastis. And looking at um, the, the link there is gonna be a working uh, document, which is gonna work sort of bottom up on some of the materials we need, but just suffice to say that it's bringing up some really interesting questions as to um, to do this exercise and to think how we present ourselves and how we have a better wiki landing page and how we have a better page on the hyperledger and all those kind of things. It's bringing questions as to what Aries needs to be presenting itself as. As I said to Samuel, what are the three things it does great, for example, that would be amazing highlights of people coming in that would be differentiators. So it's giving me some exercises around that. Helen's got a great question set we'll probably use come next week. Um, but suffice to say, you're welcome to look at that document for updates. I've been putting some more things in that I've been working uh, off doc, need to go back into there. But if you've got any interest in how you present ourselves or, if you're, or any parts of like, um, of things that we could say better or materials that we need or videos we should highlight or any aspects of this, either you can reach out to me or you can use this document or come along even better to the first meeting that Helen just mentioned. So, um, moving along with a focus on what's the low hanging fruit to get some more accurate information up first. And then we might refine that later. So let's get some things up to say what Aries is doing now, because a lot of information out there is, is 2019 era from, you know, announcements um, of what this is and things have moved along a lot since then. And now's our time to shine. So yeah, thank you for all the people I reached out to and hope to see you, of you next week. Um, yeah, thank you, uh, Alex. I will credit Alex for making me think about things uh, like how to properly articulate uh, what is different about Aries than than other agent projects. That would, didn't used to be a question because there kind of weren't any other agent projects, and so uh, that is uh, that's something that's made me think a lot. So um, so they're they're doing fantastic work. Um, okay. Uh, quick update there. Uh, the stuff we have on the, I guess next, next week is not mediators because this week is mediators. Um, uh, at bad edit, we have a, a couple of main topics. Um, oh, one that's not in the list, but, but is another quick update is the uh, Open Wallet Foundation update. Um, and then we want to talk about mediators um, and the, uh, the, the did peer unqualified did mediation update. There's now a migration doc, uh, which would be awesome. Um, so, um, so yes, uh, that is the, um, that's the goal there. Uh, any, any adjustments we want to make before, yeah, any ad adjustments we want to make to the agenda before we get going? Um, okay. Uh, OWF update, uh, last week we, uh, you know, I shared a, a link for a sort of a, a proposed collaboration, uh, type of a statement. Um, and, uh, we're still working through, uh, I say we, Alex had volunteered to, to be involved in that, uh, more directly. Um, and so we are, uh, still having conversations with OWF leadership to figure out the sort of the right uh, thing and path forward there. Um, and so it's happening, although a little slower. Um, there's a little bit of confusion in there and we are working to resolve that. Um, so yes, and Timo, any other uh, comments on OWF? Um, yeah, maybe two. Um, one question on like, you said like still in discussion, I think um, OWF like was in like their already partners with high pledge and arise and so i think it was kind of finished right the discussion at least that's what i heard from o uh, owf uh site um but that's not true 
No, well, it's it's. Let me try and explain a little bit. Um, there was uh, a little bit of a misunderstanding about the purpose of the it's sort of a joint statement that we were proposing. There isn't any legal changes actually necessary between the organizations. There wasn't any actually in the beginning anyway because of the compatible licenses um, being used by the different organizations. Um, the point of the statement was more of a signal of like collaboration, not necessarily the establishment of anything like legal necessarily. And so there's a little bit of confusion early on about what the intent was or whether something was actually needed. Um, and and that's that confusion is is being resolved and, and unraveled a, a little bit as we go. So you, the, the, their response was uh, based on a legal perspective and they're not wrong, um, but the but our goal wasn't really to establish uh, something legal either. And so it, it also wasn't really completely the thing that we were trying to do. Um, and, and so trying to resolve the, the confusion there. And I think we're um, based on emails yesterday uh, evening uh, that I think we had even up to yesterday evening, we have some increased understanding there. Does that help Timo or any yeah, other comments there? That helps. Yeah, yeah. So I had one other comment. Like, um, I think um, I'm not hundred percent happy yet. I think with the outcome, um, and that's okay. I think because we don't have to all agree on on, on like the uh, the outcome. But I do think um, it's still interesting uh, to pursue. And I think I would also, and this is something we would have to discuss, for example, in um, um, uh, for example, Airstream with JavaScript community. But if there's like, if the Open Wallet Foundation as a whole isn't ready yet to um, host a whole project like Arise, um, like we could try moving single projects over, for example, and see how that works. And if we can make that work and do that one by one. Um, and so like, I can't speak for the whole AFJ uh, community here, of course, but um, something that I would be interested to in, for example, for seeing in like being a guinea pig uh, project that that we can um, try things um, out with. I think um, because I think the main thing we have said here, like um, OWF is not ready to like it's very not mature. I think I heard from OWF also there they've offered to to basically hire everyone on the hyperledger um like that can help in high that helps with hyperledger on the infrastructure and operational side that they have offered to hire them so i think that that should give quite a lot of assurance um but yeah just wanted to throw that out here um for to consider when we yeah continue the discussions yeah so i uh one thing that i want to highlight there is that i i wouldn't really consider what we've proposed is sort of a final outcome in any way, but rather uh, an intermediate step that can be something that we do and get done, um, but that doesn't necessarily pre preclude any future uh, actions there uh, either. Um, this be, the, the, the nature of these things is, uh, as, as I, I've heard Stephen say a lot, is, is a duocracy in the sense that, uh, that the, the, the people who do have the most control over, over what's going on. And so the maintainers of, of any individual project or, or library um, matter the most when it comes to sort of what actually happens, uh, you know, individually there. Um, we are a voluntary coalition of, of, uh, of, of projects that are uh, together, et cetera. And, and I think that there's some, there, there's some helpful pieces there. Definitely some discussion to be had. Um, and I, and I think that any, uh, I think the progress that does move forward would be uh, substantially easier if it's a little bit more gradual. Um, and that allows for, um, the the change to be metabolized in a in a in a in an easier way. There are some open questions there, and so definitely there's uh, ongoing things. I I don't really consider this to be like a done and and um, and and no more discussion, uh, but rather the change the nature of the discussion uh, in a way that allows us to to accomplish things in a more targeted way as we desire. So what you described there, Timo, was not really. Um, um, at, at least in, in my brain, out of scope for what's possible in the future. Um, any any other comments or questions from anyone on that particular topic? I will be having a try and have a discussion with Daniel tomorrow. If there's points people want me to cover or not cover, I'm happy to receive those. Cool. 
Yes, please reach out. Thanks, John, for um, for being involved. Um, and and, uh, and you can reach out to John for anything that you would like to share. Um, uh, John, you're on Discord, I do believe. Yep. And so John is reachable there. Cool. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Uh, next up on the uh, agenda here today is mediators. Um, and I want to, Stephen uh, brought up the concept of a, um, of uh, having a sort of a mediator status update roundup thing. And so I'm going to chuck this over to him for an intro there. All right. Um, I'll just do an intro to the problem. Um, is my thought just so we have a, a foundation for for discussion and we'll go from there and see how things um, hopefully this helps um, I, all I am is a messenger of the problems I don't have um, great solutions so um, not going to help there but I'll show you where we've got to and our and our talking about it um, Everyone knows what a mediator is. Mediators are used for wallets in particular. They can be used elsewhere. Actually, we're, we're, I had a brief talk this week about whether we can use um, mediators to get rid of the developer problem with NGROC because um, we're finding um, some of our developers work for companies that don't allow the use of NGROC and we could actually use mediators for them. So mediators aren't just for um, um, wallets, but that's the biggest use. Um, for scalability, we want to be able to use a container orchestration platform, some horizontally scalable platform for using it. Scale um, the number of instances of a mediator as the load increases or decreases. Um, support migration of instances. Um, so from time to time, a platform scheduler like OpenShift will suddenly say, hey, I'm going to shut down this node. So everything that's on it needs to get migrated somewhere else. So instances would be shut down and started up elsewhere. That's got to be supported. Um, we need queued messages um, so that when a instance is shut down or started up or when wallets are not connected, um, queued messages are not lost. So they're not sitting in a, in a memory uh, queue associated with an instance and then get lost when that um, instance disappears for whatever reason. And then the other thing is we want to understand what scalable means for any particular solution. How many wallets can we actually support? Um, what are the assumptions about how many active wallets there's likely to be for a given use case? We've had lots of discussions um, around the VC wallet on that case. Well, if we add, you know, a, a population of 50,000 users, well, how many are going to be active at any one time? How many, um, how many messages are we going to be able to process for those? What does it mean for um, there to be 50,000 wallets out in the wild um, in terms of how scalable the um, uh, mediator is? So I've got pictures to follow, an Aries example, and then mediator examples and the complications. So the naive approach is um, on an Aries agent is everything's talking HTTPS. Um, you simply um, increase the instances and scale up by load. And so um, as, as things uh, get busier, you add another Aries instance and another Aries instance, whether that be Akapai or AFJ or whatever it is. Um, you've got agents out in the wild talking um, through this endpoint, and then that gets load balanced across these. You also have the controller, whoops, didn't mean to do that, but you also have the controller um, that's sitting out there. Um, hang on one sec, I got to move that. Um, you also have the controller um, that is talking to the various instances. Um, so big issue there, if the instances are lost, um, messages are queued on these instances. If, if things get really busy, the instances start to queue messages. If the instances fail or, or more precisely when the instances fail, because it will happen, queued messages are lost. So that, that's no good. Um, the next approach that we've taken is we add a Redis queue. Um, the way it was done in um, the first cut of this, uh, uh, 
group from Kiva first began this work, or a person from Kiva began this work, was to add a relay that basically um, received messages, stuck them on the queue, and then Aries instances stuck outbound messages uh, onto the queue, and those relays would send them back out. And this was all good when all we talked to were HTTPS. Um, all of the agents, the controller could talk to the endpoints. Um, messages would go in and out of the queue. So Redis is just an example of the queue. You could use Kafka or other, uh, other items, uh, other uh, persistent queue mechanisms for that. Messages are not lost when Aries instances go away or when relays go away. Um, uh, any instance can process any inbound message. Any relay can send any outbound message. Um, as noted, the relay isn't required. The Aries instances could, could perform all of the tasks, could push and pull messages from the queue. And basically everything is stateless, which is exactly what we want. Yay. Um, happily, um, there's no state involved. And so um, things, that's sufficient if all we have is HTTPS. So mediator adds more complexity. So the mediator picture is slightly different. I, I first of all, I left out the controller just to make it simpler. Um, we talked about this. We can configure the mediator to be auto accept. It, I'm willing to mediate for anybody that asks, or you can even make it a plugin to you know AFJ or Akapai or whatever you're using as your mediator. Um, so that it doesn't have to be external, um, uh, an external um, entity. So just to make it simpler, I, I got rid of the controller. Um, agents send in messages um, that are, uh, sorry, wallets send messages directly to agents. So a wallet, wallets are over here. Agents are over here. Obviously, wallets are agents too. They're all agents, but they, the way the agents use um, the mediator is different from how the wallets use it. So wallets send messages directly to agents. So that means when a wallet needs to do an outbound message, it can send it directly. It does not have to flow through the mediator and that's generally what's done. So messages do not flow through the mediator when this happens. Um, um, inbound messages are all outbound to a specific wallet after mediator instance processing. So the wallet may be offline, so it has to get queued. So we probably need Redis again. So this idea that we're sitting here with no queue, that's probably naive. So that's we're going to have to address that. And then the next thing, though, is wallet to mediator instances are, are sticky. So, so what I'm saying there is basically a, oh, shoot, a, um, a, a message from an agent coming in is bound for a wallet but it has to be sent through a mediator instance that interprets the message, figure out the wallet that it's for, and then sends it to that wallet. Now, what, um, what happens is the wallet to mediator instance connections are sticky. So that means when a message comes in after the connection has been established between a mediator and a wallet, the next message has to flow outbound to the wallet through that mediator. So, now, if the load balancer receives the message, sends it to the media to the first mediator instance, it has to send it over to the second mediator instance and then over to the wallet. So that means basically um, we're no longer stateless. And that's where the problems come in. Um, note that the connected instance, this mediator instance is talking to this wallet until one of them disconnects and then the wallet has to reconnect. So this mediator could disappear, this wallet could stop for a while and then start again. When that happens, this wallet is gonna go through the load balancer again and establish a connection to some any of the mediators. Could be the same one, could be a different one. So that's where we also get into um, handling issues. Uh, I see there's a chat. Hope this is helpful. Plus, he was just asking if mobile to mobile yes. uses a I mean, yes. does. If this yeah. wallet is talking to this wallet. From each of the wallet's perspective, they're just agents. They have no idea that they're they're each other's wallets, or they are our fellow wallets. So, if a wallet 
is talking to another wallet, each of them perceives the other as just some external agent and it doesn't care or know that it's another wallet. It, that's a that's a circumstance that I would, a detail that, that's not really relevant to this. Both of them have to do it, but um, it's not, it's not a special case, in other words. That's not really a special case. Oh, just on your second point where you said Wallace sends a message directly to agents. Um, I guess that's how what you're making the distinction. Agent can uh, be a I'm wallet. I'm saying that when a wallet is in a conversation with another wallet, it thinks of it as just some other agent. It doesn't care that yeah. it too is a wallet. And it, it might even... You know, it could be a wallet that doesn't share the same mediator even. Right. So, But to generalize, mobile wallets do not send a message directly. That's what... It... They send it to whatever the endpoint the other agent tells it to. Whatever, whatever endpoint this agent has said, if that's a mediator, that's a mediator. If it's directly to the agent, it doesn't matter. I could, I could say to what... This should say, I guess, directly to the agent's endpoint to be more precise. Does that make sense? Uh, not quite, because in a wallet to wallet situation where they have peer dids, yes, you're right. It's always directed by the, the peer that defines the endpoint. But I'm just making a point that outgoing messages can also go through the mediator if directed. So it's not a rule. <laughs> I don't know of any case where it would go through the mediator unless, like if the two wallets don't have the same mediator, it wouldn't go back through the same mediator, it would go to a different mediator. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, we can put that on the, we can keep going. It's just like, um, it's not, not clear the mobile to mobile agent situation. Uh, there's two, I think I think as far as I understand, and maybe from my FJ or from from Acapa, I can answer better. There's a communication through the mediator. Yeah. So basically, the the endpoint of the other agent happens to be a mobile agent, and so it would also have a uh, mediator, and it might be the same mediator uh, as the other mobile agent is using. And so from mobile to mobile communication, the outbound uh, communication may also go to the same mediator. But again, I, I yeah, I, I mean, I, I accept that that's totally true. What I'm saying is it's, I don't think it's relevant to the use case because the wallet sends it to wherever the the other, other party says to send messages. It doesn't say to the mediator, hey, I need you to send this message over to this other place for me. Um, it, it's sending it to where the other agent, whether it be a wallet or not, tells it to. And I, I think a bit of clarification here, the mediator cluster that's being referred to in this diagram is the individual wallet's mediator. When it is communicating to an agent, that agent may be behind, or may be behind its own mediator, which is separate yeah. from the wallet's mediator. Correct. Stephen, one, one question uh, yeah. regarding this uh, the cluster. So that means that the all those instance mediator have a share database or share storage have all persist the messages, but also persist the keys or share the keys. Yes. Yes. These, uh, I took that detail out, but yes, there's a shared database here that all are using. So, so uh, as in the as in the previous um, diagram, there is an you know an Ascar uh, or a you know secure storage that is shared amongst them. And then with this, I'm adding. Now we've got to have Redis because we have to have Redis so that. Um, messages for wallets that are not connected or or um, the loss of mediator instances you have to have some sort of persistent queue so you don't lose that um again relay isn't necessarily required it could be a, a mechanism so again a relay is simply just something that um 
is receives messages, puts them on the queue, takes things off the queue and sends them along. Um, oh, the, the, the other thing that I, uh, I have a new map, I have a new trackpad. Um, the other thing that I didn't highlight um, is that inbound messages all come in via HTTPS, outbound mess or, or messages to wallets um, between the media and the wallet are web sockets. So these are persistent. They're, they're, they're done over HTTP, but the connection remains and multiple messages go back and forth across them. And that's the stickiness that, that, is, that is there. So once a wallet, um, a step, and actually I'll get into that in the next, um, in the next slide. So, so how, do, how do wallets connect to relays? Is this um, level of, hopefully this level is, is right. So um, the starting point is the wallets are not connected to the mediator at all. Um, they're just uh, live, they activate and then, and they create a didcom request to send to the wallet. And that request is gonna be one of three things. One is, will you be my mediator? So the wallet has never connected to the mediator and wants to have the mediator be its, uh, have, the, have that mediator instance be its mediator. So will you be my mediator is one type. A second one is, oh, I've got a new connection that I want to establish. Um, will you mediate a new connection for me? So this is where um, it's it's establishing a peer-to-peer -peer connection with some other agent, and that agent could be a, um, a, a, a another wallet or anything. And then finally, um, a wallet that perhaps just disconnected or just came online is going to connect is going to create a request that says, "Do you have any messages for me?" So one of those three messages are going to come in. They're going to send the the mediator is going to send that request. The load balancer uh, on the instance is going to route that to a receiver, whether that be a mediator or a relay. I'm just calling them a receiver. The wallet and the receiver from then on remain connected until something causes that connection to be lost. And while they're connected, any messages between the entire mediator cluster and the wallet. Um, all are all must be um, sent through that particular receiver. So coming back here, if this wallet connects with R3, any messages destined for this wallet must be sent by R3 because it's got an established connection, WebSocket connection. R2 can't initiate a connection and wall and the wallet. Um, so therefore, it can't send a message to this specific wallet. So that's. That's the stickiness that's involved. Um, um, if any new messages come in for the wallet to the mediator, so again, any any agent sends the messages in to the um, to the mediator, um, it must be routed through whatever is connected to that wallet, be it you know R three or um, if there's a drop connection we start back with the, do you have any messages for me? And that's likely to go to a different receiver. So we wind up with, um, you know, it gets load balance, it gets sent to a different receiver instance and that receiver now has the connection. So the challenge is you, you wind up with that. Um, each mediator instance is connected to a bunch of wallets. So each has a wallet ID and each has a, uh, you know, some sort of, uh, has a WebSocket connection. So one question is how many WebSockets could each instance handle? Um, how many does it need to handle? So if you've got, you know, province of, of British Columbia has 4 million um, residents that may get a BC wallet, how many, um, how many are going to be active at any one time will have an active WebSocket and how many instances um, will we need to handle that many web sockets distributed across um, a thousand, ten thousand, you know, what's the number? We don't really know. Um, agents send in messages addressed to a wallet ID. So inbound messages coming to the mediator that are destined to a wallet um, aren't, they don't know the, um, the to address uh, of the wallet until until the message has been processed by a mediator instance. So in the case of a relay, the relay won't 
be able to interpret the message. A relay is just passing on messages inbound and outbound. So um, we're assuming it, it doesn't decrypt the message and therefore it can't determine the destination wall it did. So um, that has to be done after a mediator instance has processed it. Um, this, this is the tricky part. How do the messages get to the right instance? Um, given that there's, um, if there's no connection, um, it just goes into a pending queue to be picked up when the wallet connects. That shouldn't be a question mark, that should be a statement. Um, if queued, how does an instance query the queue for all its messages? So uh, suppose an instance has 10,000 web sockets, uh, you know, 10,000 wallets connected via web sockets. How does it find all the messages for all those 10,000 um, wallets? Um, presuming it can't go polling through to say, do you have any messages for wallet one? What about wallet two? What about wallet three? Can't do polling, it needs to pick it up somehow. Um, what happens to all those queued messages when a wallet disconnects and then disconnects first of all. So now whoever was handling that, whichever instance was handling it no longer is talking to that wallet. So it can't send it any more messages. Further, when the wallet reconnects, it may reconnect um, you know, a minute later or a half a minute later because it just went out of cell range and then and then um, switched over to another, you know, a, a, another network instance. Well, it's going to reconnect presumably to another instance. And now that instance has to find all those messages. And then finally, what happens to the queued messages when an instance shuts down? So an instance is handling the messages, it's, it's sending messages along to the, the wallets it's connected to, it shuts down, all of those messages have to be requeued and then, uh, or, or at least picked up um, when, uh, when the wallets reconnect. So we certainly need to add state. So, you know, we've got some sort of table of shared state here that says, oh, wallet, you know, wallet one did, is currently connected to R1 using web, WebSocket 1. Wallet 2 is using WebSocket 2 on R1. That's a mistake there. Um, wallet 3 used to be connected to R2, but then it disappeared. So now it's not connected to anything um, and so on. So some sort of state has to be managed somehow to enable those to pass. And with that, I sort of leave it um, that uh, I don't have any more and Kim's got a question or a comment. Um, there's one more problem that would need to be addressed and that is uh, what happens if there's two web sockets for the same wallet connected? Ooh. There you go, didn't know that one. Uh, um, whoops, and, I've lost And my... there's a couple of different stories there um, that could be handled. It's a more advanced use case um, that we could table for now, uh, but it's uh, definitely worth keeping on the... Um, uh, on the uh, okay. uh, Steven, you're still sharing. I don't know if you knew that. Steven, you're still there. You go sharing. Yeah, I know. I lost it now. My machine's, but there you go. You got uh, Rodolfo, your hands up. Yeah, Steven, have you thought of, instead of using web sockets, uh, use HTTPS okay. with a sort of polling uh, mechanism? Yeah, can, can you hear me? I, yes, we can. That's an echo. Yeah. Okay, using uh, HTTPS with a polling mechanism or maybe push notifications to go to and, and find the, the messages because that, that maybe uh, you, you're gonna avoid the web socket that is messy with millions of wallets. Um, we That is possible, although I, um, we have a, a good answer here in a second. So hold that thought. Um, I think, so I want to hear from, from Animo, but I happen to know that Stephen asked a bunch of questions and I know that we had, there's some cool stuff that we would like to share. Um, and so I'd love to throw it over to, I, I don't, uh, either, either Micah or Colton from the Indicio team. I don't know who is going to be driving. Um, I think I will go ahead and start the conversation and um, I'll pass it off to uh, Colton here in a moment. Um, let me figure out Zoom screen share. Okay. Uh, can everybody see this? Yep, it's up. Cool. 
Um, so we are talking about uh, a repo that we have called socket doc. Um, and uh, it's not public just yet, but we'll be making it public here um, later today. I think we just have a couple of uh, cleanup items before we do that. Um, but essentially it's, uh, it can be stood up um, in front of a, a cloud-based mediator. Um, and what it does is it holds web sockets um, for um, arbitrary agents, uh, wallets, um, and will forward web socket traffic across HTTP to the cloud mediator. Um, and you can set up arbitrarily many behind a load balancer. Um, the web socket will be associated with a specific instance of socket doc. Um, and so when, when Alice, for example, sends a message um, up to a, another connection through the mediator, um, it'll go to this, this first specific instance of socket doc. Um, and then socket doc will sort of convert it into an HTTP message with enough metadata to associate that message, that connection with this specific instance of socket doc. Um, so that when the cloud mediator needs to respond to Alice, uh, it knows which instance of socket doc to send it to. Um, So I'll highlight that there's no shared state between the socket doc instances. The, the state that's necessary is passed alongside the inbound message to the to whatever backend it is, a cloud mediator in this diagram. And then that state includes a backend API endpoint that is not run through the load balancer that links to the specific socket doc instance so that when a return message is sent, it knows exactly which instance to reach out to to pass it over the, the to the already or the the still connected web socket. So, no shared state between socket doc instances means a horizontally scalable without limitation at that level. Right. And and if Alice were to disconnect um, and reconnect, you know she wouldn't need to know which instance of socket doc she was connected to initially, and so can. The, the load balancer can can reconnect it with any instance of socket back um, and and that'll be fine um, and we we recently uh ran some tests um with this setup and i'll let up uh, before moving on there to the uh, test i do want to go ahead and add on that when because you mentioned when alice disconnects um so when Alice disconnects, the socket doc process will go ahead and send off a message saying, hey, Alice has disconnected, giving the mediator a method to potentially start queuing the messages instead of trying to send like forward them on in live delivery mode. And uh, Stephen, I see your hand up. The question I had coming back to that is is messages coming from other agents going into the mediator how do those get associated with the doc the socket doc so they don't yeah that's doc what, do, so, I, so what happens with those yeah <laughs> that's so so you're asking the right question socket doc doesn't actually care it does no evaluation of the messages yeah. And so what matters is the software on the other side. So if you are uh, if you're using socket doc with an agent and, and you want to uh, keep track of, um, you know, which uh, which agent is connected, then on an inbound message, the first inbound message from that agent, you're going to record the, the socket doc identifier, which basically contains the URI for a, re a return message. Um, and uh, it you're going to associate that with whoever actually sent the didcom message that you process socket doc doesn't do the processing which means that if you then want to send a, a message back out at any time whether it's a live delivery mode or just a message the, the mediator wants to send 
then it's capable of uh, of looking that up in state. And that and and then uh, when the, you you see there's a post to message URI and a post to disconnect URI. So when when the socket is disconnected, a, a, a message just with the disconnect URI is sent to the uh, or, or just with the the ID is sent to the cloud mediator, so that the cloud mediator or whatever agent is behind it. Um, is is capable of cleaning up their state and knowing that that uh, a current socket doesn't yet exist for that okay. um, party. Does that make sense? So all the state is actually held by whatever agent is behind it. Socket Doc just handles the problem of holding onto the web socket and allowing for messages to be able to be sent back to the uh, back to Alice in this diagram's case um, via the the external host and port. Um, you know, send. Uh, um, you know, send URI that's actually passed. So oh. basically that diagram that I showed or that trivial table that I just, just made up is basically going to consist of a wallet did and a URL. Yes. So we use, and as an ID, we use the URL and, and the URL is, go ahead. Sorry. So that, that state is going to be maintained in the cloud mediator. Here's, here's all the wallets that I support. That, that I've agreed to mediate. And here is their current um, URL to send them to whenever a message comes in. That's correct. Okay. Yep. So uh, the, the socket doc is, is, is as simple as possible. We say cloud mediator or other agent because a socket doc doesn't actually care. What is important is that if you have an agent that is receiving messages, it needs to understand the format being sent because it's not just a didcom message. It has a little bit of metadata alongside it, which contains that that uh, URL, which serves as an ID for the socket. Um, and so uh, th there may be a little bit of, of stuff put in front of it to make that happen. Um, there's the good news is, and, th and there's code here on the screen, and again, this will be open later today. Um, so this is what the message actually looks like. There's a there's a metadata um, that has a struct in it with the callback URIs, and then and then the uh, and then the actual message is passed alongside there as well. Um, and so this isn't a lot of code, but it performs a really important role that allows for uh, an abstraction to occur, uh, architecturally speaking, between the maintenance of sockets and the and then a back-end processing engine that doesn't have to be capable of sockets at all it has to have a minor understanding of how to use socket doc as its front end if you will uh, but that's pretty minor um, and uh, and everything else so we've we've had this and we've used it um, but we wanted to verify that it performed the way that we hoped it would and we ran some performance tests yep and and just to clarify like in this scenario here where you now have the wallets connecting in through socket doc uh, the wallets, as far as they're concerned, they're still talking to the mediator via WebSockets. But now, as the media, as far as the mediator is concerned, it is only communicating via HTTP GET or HTTP POST requests inbound and outbound. Um, now, moving on to the performance metrics that Sam mentioned. If one of the instances of socket doc fails, what, what happens? Um, if it fails, then all of those agents will need to reconnect, thereby associating their um, new WebSocket uh, with the new uh, uh, mapping inside the cloud mediator. Right. So, but their state, I guess, is held by the mediator. So, yes. no problem. The, the, the posts would fail, right? The posts. The, the, the posts would fail. So, if the socket doc came back up. And we tried to post a message, but Alice was no longer associated with this socket doc instance here. The post to socket doc would fail saying, hey, we don't have that guy connected to us, at which point the cloud mediator would say, oh, hey, my post failed. I need to queue that message instead. And wait for her to reconnect. Yep. Okay. So we, we ran a few tests, just kind of scaling up the system. This test here, uh, we ran it with 3,000 users um, just to see how it would perform. And we were getting just, you know, the user, all of these users are just establishing a connection to the mediator and then doing a ping 
a continual ping every about minute or two uh, to the mediator. And we noticed that there weren't really any failures and everything was going smoothly. So we changed from, er, and the system use on both the nodes was fairly minimal. So what you're indicating here, Colton, is that we have two uh, socket dock nodes in front of a cloud mediator of some type. Yes, and actually, so what we're doing here is we have the uh, Amazon AWS load balancer in front of two T2 um, micro nodes, which have one gigabyte of RAM. And so we are currently just doing using or performing these tests with these two nodes. And then we have a cloud mediator behind that, right? Yep. Okay. And so fairly minimal uh, RAM usage and CPU usage here throughout that test. Next up, we decided to bump up the numbers by quite a bit. And we bumped up the number of users to uh, 10,000 users. Uh, the, the drop here is because we were... So uh, I actually think that this is a statistics issue um, where the 95 uh, percentile uh, started to take into account the pings. Um, the 95 percentile here includes the AFJ startup time. Um, but as soon as you have enough pings, that may cause the 95 percentile to drop lower there. Um, and so that's uh, due to uh, a, a statistic uh, function. I I also thought that the drop off was due to the fact that we were starting up those uh, AFJ agents or wallets in this case. Uh, we slowed down the spin up. Yeah, we did here, slow so. down the spin up just due to a limitation on the. Um, test machine? The test machine itself that was sending these requests out um, uh, was due to a CPU limitation. Um, but again, it's a statistic issue. If you look up above at the percentiles inside of the different uh, functions here, uh, you'll see that the ping uh, stayed rel relatively consistent um, and the on start time was relatively consistent if you look at the different percentiles here. And the startup was dragging that percentile way up compared to where the pings Correct. were at. And again, like 10,000 users, no big deal. We're still going ahead and handling everything. Uh, all of those socket communications uh, being load balanced. And we're still, we're only at 436 megabyte RAM usage on these two nodes, CPU usage is still relatively small. So we decided to bump it up even further to um, 12,500 simultaneously connected users over WebSockets. Um, all of those pings still, for all intents and purposes, chugging along just fine across these two load balanced uh, T2 micro instances on Amazon. And our RAM usage is still below 500 megabytes on both of these two nodes. And our CPU usage uh, with these active pings is still relatively small. And so what this means is that all of these agents, they are, or, all of these agents that we have connected and running these pings, they are live active agents in a sense, just waiting for messages. And so if they were mobile agents, this would be like 12,500 people all at once, just opening the app and having it open on their screen. As soon as they would close the app, it would close that WebSocket communication. Um, but our tests here are without that whole close of the app. These are all active WebSocket co uh, connections. Uh, so Charles got a beginner question. Why the focus on WebSockets? Shouldn't it be transport agnostic? 
Um, a, a mediator could use SMTP. Uh, the the preferred the reason why it's preferred for mobile agents is that you want a message to arrive really soon without uh, necessarily pulling. You can also rely on um, on push notifications for this. But when you're uh, if the if the app is open, the likelihood that the person is going to be receiving a message goes up substantially. Um, as opposed to any other time, which means that maintaining a live WebSocket connection produces a really, really fast user experience for inbound messages. Um, but we've had a challenge up to this point about uh, scaling the number of WebSockets that you can maintain um, uh, easily. Um, so these T2 micro instances uh, cost 10 bucks a month on AWS. I, I realize on different platforms that will be different, but just to give you kind of a sense of, of what the cost is. And, and we're making an educated guess that, uh, that at this point we can support uh, 10,000 uh, um, sockets per T2 micro instance, uh, uh, given this behavior. Obviously, some, some more real world experience will be helpful in, in evaluating that number, but we, we feel like this is a really great way to cost effectively provide that, that connected web socket experience. Uh, Kim. Um, I did wanna mention that um, the uh, load testing could go much higher. It was a limitation of the load testing configuration at the time, uh, not the micro instances or the cloud mediator. Yes, totally. We we had a single instance driving this, um, and we have the capability of doing clustered uh, test driving boxes, and that's what we'll need to do to, to drive it above that. We were running a very large instance to to run this number of sockets um, and, and what was happening. And that test, by the way, Kim mentioned this, was using AFG underneath. So unfortunately we have like one minute left. Uh, this has been fantastic, um, but uh, hopefully, so this falls Stephen into your, um, your relay uh, in, the, in the diagrams that you were showing um, yeah. and, can, and can perform that relay really, really well. And it doesn't care what's behind it. It can actually feed those messages, of course, um, into, uh, into a queuing system or any other mechanism that would be useful for that. Um, and we also have a proxy mediator that that that, uh, that Kim just dropped a link to that allows. This is what we use to avoid the um, um, the. Oh shoot, I just blanked on this. Oh, you can see this openly later today. We almost had it open. Um, it I think it would work with AFJ as the mediator as long as AFJ uh, was able to process the inbound posts. So there may be a tiny shim in front of that uh, of that. Uh, 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 Timo, in order to use AFJ as that, um, the, there's no there's no pre-processing of the didcom messages done. It's just that we're posting that with some additional metadata. Um, so really quick, in the agenda um, there is a link that I that I need to share because we need review on it. Um, Timo has produced a a legacy did transformation document that needs review, um, and so that we can use this. Uh, the proposal is that we use this uh, as a way of, of transitioning off of the legacy DIDs, um, given sort of what was pioneered inside of AFJ. Um, and so uh, Timo uh, created this. This does need review, um, and we can bring it up and talk about it online and in our next meeting. Uh, but I wanted to highlight that as well. Um, we will be posting the Socket Doc repo link inside of the, uh, the Aries channels on Discord. Um, and for your perusal, and we would love some questions, feedback, uh, bug issues, all of those other things. Um, if the community is acceptable to it, we would we can transfer that repo into the Hyperledger organization. Um, it'll first be made public as a um, as an Indicio repository um, with the license file, et cetera, in there. But uh, but we we would love to transfer that. We just want to make sure that it's desirable by the community to do so. And I apologize for going over. Uh, but thank you, and we can talk about this, and then pr please reach out. Um, Colton uh, and um, and Micah are the are the experts on this code, and uh, and they would be happy to to answer any questions. They are also on Discord. Any any final comments since we're two minutes over? Great stuff. Thank you. Fantastic. Awesome work, guys. Thank you. Thank go. you. Thanks, everyone.